So I want to just come right out of that gates and say autism or autism spectrum disorder. We want to understand is that it's multifactorial. There's multiple causative factors. And if you think that acetaminophen and Tylenol is the thing that causes autism, that's simply not true. But when we put out this one thing like Tylenol is now linked to autism, there is some evidence of that. So if we're taking an unbiased perspective, we want to share this. There were some handful of studies that show that acetaminophen consumption and the increase in that led to then greater causes of autism. Now, there were also a handful of studies that show that there was no connection. And then there were some that were a little bit confounded and, and we'll say more neutral. So what I like to do is I want to say there isn't a silver bullet. There's usually not a silver bullet, even like something like an autoimmune issue. There are multiple causal factors. And yes, acetaminophen may be one of those, not due to the acetaminophen itself, but the acetaminophen's effect on glutathione, our main detoxifying antioxidant. But of course, let's keep our mind open. Maybe it is the acetaminophen itself. In my opinion, we try to eliminate it as much as humanly possible just like we've already done with aspirin and NSAIDs. And we take Tylenol's advice that it gave us many years ago and say it's not recommended for pregnant women. And we begin to look for healthier, more natural alternatives. And only in emergency-based cases do we begin to use that under doctor-based supervision.